Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ati Allah, Ati Rasulu Ulul Amri Minkum. And I always reminder for myself and Abdukul Aji so da'ifu, miskeen, azalim, jahar. And but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence, alhamdulillah. InshaAllah. <laughs> so a lot of information always it's good to keep meditating on these teachings so that to expand the heart. We describe to our people here that the knowledges from these oceans are infinite. What limits us is the capacity of individuals. So we're trying to take from a limitless ocean with a limited capacity. Our life's work is to open the heart. So you take the knowledges, you meditate on them, try to take your notes on them and that to open the heart so that it keeps opening for its infinite capacity. Otherwise that level was reached and then we try to go to next topic, then somebody wants to take it to another topic, another topic and we never truly expand our capacity. So that's why that each year they can have completely different understandings because the, the knowledges are infinite. Allah's oceans have, have no, under, no limit onto them. The only one whom is limited is ourselves and our capacity. Our life is to open that capacity of the heart, inshaAllah. <coughs> As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyid, Sayyidi, how do the four Gothar streams of the Holy Companions relate to the water, milk, honey, and nectar and the four Gothar streams of the Ahlul Bayt? Nice. I have no idea. <laughs> that's a that's a deep one, inshaAllah. There has to be a relationship that Allah gave these four khalifas for us to understand. So when we write them Abu Bakr, Omar, Uthman, Ali and put Muhammadun Rasulullah in the center, it's because of a spiritual reality that exists of that kawthar. As Salaamu Alaykum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. That four springs are continuously flowing from the heart and the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah to these fountains. And we take from these fountains their souls and they feed us for the sake of Allah Means that in this world of light we said the food is not physical, it's knowledges. That their support, their knowledges, what they give to us is a sustenance for our soul. So when, when we sit with them spiritually and we see ourselves drinking from a kawthar, they give to you a cup to drink in the ruhaniyat, it's the ocean of their soul. It's their kawthar realities. That's why their love and is our completion and uh, their love brings us to the nearness and dearness of Sayyidina Muhammad and that's why when the shaykhs speak it's from a kawthar. 
because these knowledges are kawthari, not the shaykh is kawthari, he's nothing, he's nobody. But as a mouthpiece for that reality, you have to respect the reality. So the reality that's coming is kawthar. So you want to document the kawthar, that's why you write. So the fountain pen that you hold is an imitated pen of the kawthar. You're documenting the kawthar realities, you, you're trying to take a, as much of this kawthar onto your reality as possible. But it requires a spiritual understanding. So if I gave you a cup of water and said, this is from paradise, you would drink it all, you would bathe in it, put some on your face, give it to your family, give it to your children. But because you're physical and not yet thinking spiritual. If you would think spiritual, you would understand that their words are, are cups of water from paradise. Not even paradise, from the kawthar above, way above paradise are the kawthar realities of Sayyidina Muhammad So the similitude of writing is drinking because as you write it's being written onto your soul as if you drank that reality. So that's why their knowledges then when they're dispensing their knowledges, they're feeding their jama'ah, right? As soon as they talk, this is the food for their souls. The one whom is taking the most of that food, who takes the most of that barakah is the one that has an understanding of these are from the kawthar oceans and as I transcribe them, I'm putting them into my reality. Much deeper than if I just listen because if I listen I don't know really what I got. Did I take a little taste of it but what was this? Was this kebab or was this zulubiya? What was this? <laughs> but if you write it down you know exactly what it was and you go back and you read it and then that kawthar activates again. So it means these are a deep reality when we take from their presence, the shaykhs are sitting with them taking from their, their kawthars, drinking from their fountainhead these haqqaiqs and these realities inshaAllah. So we begin to think more spiritual than physical. If you truly think spiritual then we would understand a great deal more of what's, what's taking place, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Alaykum As Salaam wa Thank you so much for the beautiful teachings about the four companions and the asa, siwa, qalam and ring. Can you please expand a little more about the four companions? in relation to the levels of the heart? No. <laughs> it's an entire book, yeah. That they have to get the book, levels of the heart inshaAllah. Yeah, get to the just those, that, that, that takes a whole week to do that. This is a specific question. Yeah. See. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Thank you for your immense teachings and sharing the realities of heavenly knowledges. May Allah give you long and healthy life. What is the importance of Maghrib at the level of Qalb in relation with Sayyidina Uthman? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Those are Zishan's questions. <laughs> He's just trying to, <laughs> trying to stump me. Yeah, I said, well, this is way too much. Yeah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do that. How to deal with the fear of unknown on our path and build strong faith on divine plan? That sounds like a regular question. <laughs> yeah. So, how to deal with what? <laughs> How to deal with the fear of unknown on our path and build strong faith on divine plan? Fear of unknown. I think the first two questions voided my brain. He <laughs> 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 deprogrammed my head. What are you? The, the void of unknown and Sayyidina Usman and Maghrib. Our whole path is unknown, this is what we call faith. And 
when we have a love for the Divine and an adherence to this love, when you feel that you are holding Allah's hand means that the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad is so strong. This is our way of understanding that when we want to draw near to the Divine the Presence Allah has to give us something from the realities of physicality. This love for Prophet allows us to understand within the realm of creation because you draw near to the presence of Prophet you can witness the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad They do in dreams but more powerful is in life state because we're not dreaming people. In their tafakkur and their contemplation that they connect their heart and they enter into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad with the madad and support of the shaykhs. As a result of this human interaction at a supernatural level of reality, it's exactly what Allah wants for us. That how can you have a supernatural experience from something that makes no sense to you? A being that you don't know, a direction that's not available, it has to be a, a human experience. So the human experience of experiencing Prophet is attainable. So everyone's grandmother sees him in a dream, it's a, an attainable and written and documented by all scholars that this is something that a believer can achieve. As a result they begin to clean themselves, keep their practices, learn their muraqabah, learn their tafakkur, learn from the, the power emanating from the shaykh's hearts that they connect, they use like a facilitator to reach towards these realities from our dunya level into their heavenly stations. And as a result of building that connection they begin to draw near, they begin to witness their shaykh in the spiritual realm. They draw to a strong connection of this ishq and muhabbat and reverence because what's emanating from the shaykh is a reflection of Sayyidina Muhammad not the shaykh. You'll never see the shaykh and who he is and what he is. He's merely going to be a, a, a mirror reflecting Muhammadun Rasulullah out to the students. That's the only role they play. Say, oh, I saw shaykh and I saw your reality. You'll never know the shaykh's reality. Means then you're above the shaykh. So you can only look up to their feet. Their reality is not important. What you see is a Muhammadan reflection that comes out. As a result of drawing near to that reflection, what happens? You begin to build the bond of, of love and a familiar love. So we understand it as a human love like we know and how we love everything on this earth. It becomes supernatural and more important than any love on this earth. And as a result of that love then you feel your hand, you're holding, you're holding their hand and that's faith because you know your deeds and actions, you know your sincerity. You know your practices, as a result I know I'm holding their hand. If I'm holding their hand then this is my understanding, why, why not it's going to come, why what I'm asking for is not going to happen, why these goodnesses and protections not to come to me. So this is what we call faith as it becomes more clearer and more clear because you begin to act on that faith as a result of holding your hands that my life for you, my life for this, this way to reach towards your reality. Every time I want that connection stronger I sacrifice more, I do more, I think of more ways to draw stronger to that presence until they feel the hand very strong upon their hand and their faith has yaqeen now, certainty. 
Without that certainty become very difficult. That's why they're giving this system of certainty, meditate, contemplate, connect your heart, begin to, to enter this realm of light and build your connection with the shaykh from the shaykh to the heart of Prophet That becomes your certainty. When you're holding then uh, whatever happening is happening. That why difficulty is going to come, it doesn't matter, it will pass. That every sadness that's coming, inshaAllah it'll get better. If not here in the grave, if not in the grave in akhirah. So it's that relationship that gives us that security and assurity that we feel assured. And that's they say, oh wow, this, why this person has so much faith? The faith is actually something very strong and they feel it by their connection and that's what grants us certainty in the connection. Without it then yes those people don't achieve faith because they're always fearful, they're always fearful, oh, how is it going to happen, why is it going to happen, is it going to happen, is it not going to happen, how is it going to happen, is it? But that's not faith, faith is you're holding their hand and that's it, it's going to happen. Now when is it going to happen it's not up to you, just be patient. If things are going to change, not going to change, all you have to know is that when you hold that hand all goodness is coming in your direction. You may not see it as something good, a test and a difficulty comes. We said before, don't think, oh everything is bad, everything is bad. Everything is an opportunity. Every test that comes it's an opportunity for us to grow and for Allah to dress us and bless us and take us to the next level. Especially when you're holding the hand you know that it, nothing is coming bad, it's just an opportunity to grow. So sometimes you hold the hand and it's, it's great and you're feeling all the fires and other times you feel like that hand is just holding you by a thread like you're going to fall but you're not going to let go until you can regain yourself and become straight again and, and solid. So you're, you're always going up and down in life but as long as you're holding the hand of Prophet then be firm, it'll pass, everything will get okay. And then you feel yourself again like on a plateau and then another time you're, 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 you're rising and dropping and coming and going. This is the, the stations of yaqeen and we have to have that connection, we have to have that love that grants us an immense love. Imagine if you know your proximity to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad this gives you an assurity from the way we talk and teach, Allah must really love you. If Allah didn't love you, He would distance you from the reality of Prophet That's why we feel in our heart, what are we going to do for that love? What are we going, how are we going to show Allah how much we love Him, thankful for everything that He has done? And the greatest gift that he gave to us was this love and proximity to Prophet And that becomes our life, this becomes our khidmat, why we want to serve. We want to show Allah how happy we are with this love He's granted to us and we want the whole world to know this love. So these are, these are the, the oceans of muhib and, uh, and, and ishq for Divine Presence inshaAllah. <coughs> As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi whenever I try to share something or try to read from the app every time my device gets damaged why is this happening what should I do please forgive me Yeah make sure you have a taweez on your device make sure you're using it for good things and, and don't mix bad things with good things and, and not very bad things with good things because then the device starts to contain very negative energies and then you try to do positive energy and they start fighting inside the device. And also anytime we try to do good shaitan also tries to fight back. So having a taweez on your phone, having taweez upon yourself, having yourself always in wudu, it's a spiritual battle. So now bring it back to what we described, this is a spiritual battle and you're throwing like lasers out and then you asking this question right now, I don't know why every time I fire my arrow a bullet comes towards me. Because you're firing, they know now where you are, they're firing back. So it's a matter of you know your strategy, keeping your wudu, keeping your practices, keeping your madad and keep firing. 
So this is a, a battle against shaitan when we share, when we do good things and, and again we said to the point where we, we share without the agitation and aggravation of other people. So we don't want to go to other students and keep bothering them. Some students and many students have professional sites for their work and for their, their livelihood. Don't keep posting on those things and, and, and bothering people. You'd go out and find new people, not my people. Go and find new people and bring them towards the tariqah. Don't ever deal with the shaykh's people, he's dealing with his own people. So we don't need an internal police department. We need people to go out and do dawah, find a group that, that nobody's posting anything of any relevance and post there. So alhamdulillah this khidmat can be infinite, it can post all over the, the world with these things, with the, the app, the charities, the websites, everything inshaAllah. <coughs> As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As salaam wa Sayyidi, how to protect from evil eyes? From all your du'as and all the practices, all the energy work and the color blue. That's what the, those evil eye symbols represent and we have talks on that, that it's, it's not that evil eye charm that does anything, doesn't get out and have supernatural powers. But Allah gave the hikmah and the wisdom of the color blue. The color blue has the ability to draw your eyesight. So anytime you have hasad and uh, envy and enmity that you're feeling something wrong, you wear something from the color blue. So the rings, the necklace, something from the color blue. So a bracelet, anything because that blue draws the eyes of people. And what became famous of this design of the evil eye was that it drew the evil eyes of people. Because if its symbol looked like an eye, it looked like it was looking at you. So most of the times people whom have these issues, as soon as you wear these colors, people will say, oh, oh what's that, what's that bracelet? And it did what it was supposed to do. It took the eye of that person onto the the bracelet, the color, the, the jewelry and not on you, not on your, your being because people fire energy back and forth at each other. If they're jealous of people, if they have uh, envy for people, they send an energy without control. So these are the different practices. I think we have articles on, on deflection of negative energies so that not to have the hasad of people inshaAllah. And all of our spiritual practices, the taweez and, and making your madad for all of these energies. People whom are coming under attack from very negative energies and again sort of keeping our practices. We have a, a booklet on, on fighting black magic, how to keep that recitation, how to keep the madad and how to keep yourself in wudu and that becomes very important for people whom are trying to fight off very, very negative attacks. InshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah As we hoped, did we get purchased or are we still waiting to be purchased? We love you Sayyidi. Thank you. Allah bless you and, and all who are listening. We are given an opportunity to reach that reality, right? Because Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq inspiring within the teachings from his fountain that aspire to be purchased. You have to put in your heart and everybody has to go back to themselves to understand. So it's not blanket because that would be like false hope of other practices and other religions that you come to the church and somebody prays for you and you're saved. No, there's no saving, Allah only saves. This is an, a knowledge and uloom that comes and teaches you, you have an opportunity. And for Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq to be dispatched, Allah wants to see sincerity. So are we truthful and are we sincere? Are we sincere against our fight against shaitan and not bothering people and only struggling against myself? And all the teachings that we gave, everything that was represented with the Asa, everything that was represented with the reality of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, 
that I want to take this path and this is your path, Siddiqiyya path. I want to be sincere in that path, please send me a support. You'll struggle, as soon as you achieve the sincerity then that command has to come from Allah to Prophet this servant is sincere. When the servant is sincere what happens? Shaitan doesn't have a grip on them. But if you find yourself continuously shaitan dragging you and literally calling you because you have satanic friends, satanic influences, satanic uh, everywhere, if they're getting hold of you then no you have not been purchased. If they call you he's got your number, if they direct message you they got your number, your shaitan is right there so know how you could be free. So when you isolate yourself you have to have the willingness, I'm isolating myself from these things. I don't want anyone direct messaging, I don't want to communicate. Don't play in shaitan's garden and think you're going to be safe. When we teach people share, share the article, get out. Why are they direct messaging and talking to each other? It's completely forbidden especially if between men and women. Don't play in shaitan's field, don't think you're doing da'wah, don't think you're advising for the shaykh, stay out of shaitan's garden. When we do that then you know we act sincere. If we act sincere then shaitan won't have your number and won't be able to keep calling you, right? So we know many people in our 35 years of doing this, they would come Shaitan would get a hold of them and boom they were gone again because somebody would call, a friend would call, a, a business opportunity with Shaitan is very clever right, he's doing this for how many years? A business opportunity calls and to take you completely out of tariqah, out of even the tariqah thought, out of anything. So he knows many ways, he can send something inappropriate for somebody who wants that. He can send business for somebody who wants that, he can send money for somebody who wants that, he send the lottery for somebody who wants… He has many ways to come after people, it's not one way. So it's a matter of are we blocking everything, isolating ourselves, keeping a, a practice of being silent, working with sincerity and, and sort of disconnecting from this dunya and then trying to achieve that sincerity. Uh, isharat come and Prophet satisfaction come and they feel themselves being connected and they feel themselves on a floor. Then we gave the talk of the elevator, right? Because you're… you feel yourself on a very high level floor, not proud but you feel like there's nobody around. Yes, if that's true they've taken you up to a level on a floor where very few people are and you literally have to get in the elevator and go down to start communicating with people and that's very uncomfortable. So when you go down and start communicating, you say, what am I going to talk with these people, what is this, who's this? Usually it's with relatives, nothing in common with them and you just kind of sit through it and take it back in the elevator and go back up. So this is, we gave those talks on that reality. When Allah saves you, He puts you on a very high floor. Those floors are the least populated floors. But if you s feel that you're like in the garage and everyone is always around you, it most likely it's not saved. So Allah raises the servant in which they have very little contact. Then they go a little higher, even less contact because these floors are not occupied in Allah's towers. What's the most occupied is the lower, they're around all sorts of uh, rubbish types of things. That's not where you want to be, you want to make sure, Ya Rabbi that take away this fellowship of these crooks and raise me to be something higher. Then they go up and they begin to see, oh there's, there's only the good people, the zikr people, the people who want to improve themselves. So we all have to go back to our own lives and see everything. That's why I said, show me your friends and I can tell you a little bit more about yourself. This was a common saying, so this is a, a deep reality. Everyone will know when they contemplate then, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, if a student would like to write a Nath Sharif for the love of Prophet mm -hmm. what should be the conditions? 
Make it a good one inshaAllah. <laughs> Be sincere. You can send it to ChatGPT, he'll help you too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they make salawats, they write nods, yeah. everything. Yeah. But the guy said you have to can sort of check it because sometimes it's, it's it, it not really yeah. <laughs> a word. It makes up its own words yeah. and everything. But alhamdulillah, and anything with a good intention then alhamdulillah. Make the nod to make your poem and make you know the, the letters of love to Prophet and everything is witnessed. <coughs> and there, any interaction towards Muhammadun Rasulullah is documented, witnessed and an angel presents that action to Prophet He's the one whom keeps hisab. When Allah is describing we keep the best of accounting, we describe all that accounting is on a ledger. Mm. And what did Allah describe Prophet ﷺ? Imam and Mubeen. That he's the clear register, clear Imam. Means that if everything has to be written somewhere, where is it written? It has to be written within the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah because nothing outside of that. Outside of Muhammadun Rasulullah is what? La ilaha illallah. That is already self explanatory saying, don't look here. So, alhamdulillah. Mm. As salaamu alaykum, Sayyidi. Wa alaykum as salaam wa Sayyidi, is manifesting the things okay? When is, it, when is it disliked by Allah? I ask because sometimes I think I'll manifest it before thinking to make du'as. Is manifesting a kind of self-worship? Everybody manifests. This is the power that Allah gave. We gave in those talks of manifestation. So it's a matter of you're accountable for what you manifest. Shaitan doesn't manifest anything, right? So shaitan, why he wants to hijack insan? Because he knows, وَلَكَ الْكَرَامْ بَنِي adam. He knows that Allah gave this favourite because he's accursed. So when Allah gave to his favourite creation the ability to want and it begins to appear. So shaitan said, well then these are very powerful. If I attach myself to them, what I want can appear through them. I'll give my desire to them and it begin to appear. So he's using humans as his avatar to manifest what he wants on this earth and the badness that he desires for, for Bani Adam, Adam and his progeny salam. So we're accountable for what we manifest, what our heart wants. And that's why Allah teaches that, kunu ammalun bin niyat, right? Every action is going to be based on your intention. So it means if you willingly intend to hurt somebody, they get hurt, Allah will punish you. It will be written as a punishment against you. You think when nobody noticed it, doesn't matter. Allah notices everything, Allah has written everything. But you say, no I didn't intend that but somehow a difficulty came. That's why Allah giving to us this warning that you're a very powerful creation. So make sure your intentions are correct and that then goes to everything, Ya Rabbi I'm intending to do this, I'm intending to go to zikr, I'm intending to do my awrad, I'm intending no tirar ba'een, no the ittiqaf, no the khalwa, this is what we're reciting at every, every action that we do, I'm intending Ya Rabbi to make my, my khalwa, I'm intending to isolate myself, I'm intending to do these good things so that Allah provide the action of it and the action for it. Because once you made the intention and let's say the action didn't quite match, Allah's reward is, I'll give you the reward of your intention. You intended to go for zikr tonight, you didn't make it, no worries. You will be given the reward of your intention because it was a good intention. So some things happen and you couldn't get it and people become so sad, I wasn't able to, it doesn't matter. You intended, Allah had a different game sort of registered for you but you will get the reward of your intention inshaAllah based on good things inshaAllah. That's it Alhamdulillah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.